Our service of Holy Eucharist starts this morning with the penitential order found on page 351 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 351. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Turning to the opposite page, let us say, hmm, let us pray the Decalogue with the response, Amen, Lord have mercy. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, For the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Turning the page, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Have mercy upon us. O 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to the nations. Kings of people shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 22, verses 22 to 30. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line give glory, for he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me. 
Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When Jesus says to Peter, get behind me, Satan, we see a side of Jesus that at first is uncomfortable for us. We like to think of Jesus as our our buddy. We'd like to think if we tried to save our buddy from impending doom, um, they might not respond by calling us Satan. But here we are. Jesus knows what he has and what the future has in store for him. This is not news, particularly in the synoptic gospels. In John's Gospel, we're going to get a little bit of, um, for lack of better words, insecurity about Jesus' mission. But in the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they're all of one mind. Jesus pretty much knows where he's going, what he's going to do, and what's going to happen. So when Jesus shares his pending death on the cross with the, his disciples, it's only natural that his friends would say, Jesus, are you sure about this? Uh, you don't need to, to do this. So Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You are setting your mind not of divine things, but of human things. You are putting your mission, your desire for comfort, above my mission, the mission of salvation to the world. This is an important scripture, particularly for we who like to soften the blow, for we who like to make the path more accessible and maybe a bit easier for we the people to walk on. And it's only natural. My son Jack likes to play uh, any, any video game. And I watch him play, and as I think the, one of the first generations of fathers who grew up with these same games, sometimes it's hard for me to watch him struggle in this, these digital competitions of fingers and eyes. It's hard for me to watch because he's not good. 
And sometimes I feel like the, the basketball father who, who maybe was on the, the varsity team in, in high school and watches the son miss the free throws and thinks, son, you got to go out there and practice. And it's my instinct as a father to, to help him uh, make this this gaming task in front of him easier. We've been on spring break for the last week. There's been a lot more TV in the house than before. That's why we're in the video game department today. Maybe next week we'll talk about how math is, but how hard math is, but today we're going to stick to the video games. Anyway, so the, you have these options. And I, I always want to, I want to make it easier for him. I want to turn it down and say, it's okay, bud, you, you, can, you can do this. Just, just simplify it. But then I think, when I was his age, right, when our, we didn't have options in our games, we had a, well, they were hard, and when we lost, we just started over, and we were happy. Um, but then I was playing with him this week, which was a joyful opportunity to get a chance to interact with my children by not telling them they have to do their math homework, or why haven't they done their math homework yet, but just enjoy them in the spring break. Um, and we were playing, and we were talking about these games, and I remembered that when I was his age i had this device that plugged into my nintendo that had all of the cheat codes i was able to make it so much easier on myself he doesn't have the cheat codes so maybe he's not as bad at these things as i think he is point being sorry point being it is my instinct as a parent to make his life easier. I don't like to watch him struggle. We do this in church too, particularly the Episcopal church where um, there are some churches, some religious organizations who have strict rules and guidelines. You have to do this and that. You have to give this much or wear this to church or come to church on time or not, with, you know, but not here, particularly not at St. Peter's. We kind of pride ourselves on some of our loosey goosiness, and I think that's a good thing. But then sometimes it trickles down to our, our faith, our core principles, how we act out our Christ like mission. And like church, like watching Jack struggle with video games. It's our instinct to make our mission easier. It's our instinct to start shorthanding ourselves. Whom do we love? Everyone. Well, maybe not everyone, because I'm pretty good at justifying why this list over here doesn't need my love or why this list over here doesn't need my attention. But when we do that to ourselves, when we do that to our faiths, it's just kind of like turning down the video game into easy mode. Puts life on easy mode. Get behind me, Satan, with that easy mode stuff. Jesus says, to Peter. Jesus' ministry was not easy mode. When we soften the challenge of Christ's mission, we remove the idea of his ultimate and complete self-sacrifice on the cross. There was nothing left outside of the sacrifice. Christ gave all for all. So in this season of Lent, we turn our focus between cross and self, cross and self, continually reflecting where we find ourselves on this journey. And when we look at the cross, we receive the reminder 
of what total self-sacrificial love looks like. There's no easy mode in detaching ourselves from ourselves to love the other. We see this, though, in the larger church, even in the Episcopal church. Every denomination, every denomination has a blind spot for who they feel maybe they can hold back some of that love for. Some, it's this group. Some, it's that group. But we all do it. We do it because these man-made institutions that are the church are just like the dad who wants to protect the son and say, well, I know it's hard to love that one over there. You get easy mode this week. You don't have to. That's not gospel living. The gospel is all for all. This Lent, hopefully you continue to practice something in your life that draws you closer to God each and every day to prepare for that Easter feast. And each and every week, we're going to receive new reminders and new challenges along the way. It's going to be our instinct to be overwhelmed, to kind of Oh, I just can't do it. And that's okay. As we're on this journey, we receive the grace to have those days where we could say, just can't do it today. But know that while we can say we can't do it today, it's not okay for us to say we're not going to do it ever. It's not okay for us to accept the blind spots of our faith. It's not okay to accept the blind spots of our political ideologies. This week we were reminded that no matter who is in office, we still hold back our condemnation of dictators. We still lock children in cages. We can't ignore the attack. We can't ignore the harm that our institutions do to creation because we may agree or disagree with whomever happens to have power. There's no easy mode for Christ's mission. Christ gave all for all. When we hear ourselves wanting to throw up our hands and say, this is hard, may our instinct be to that part of ourselves, get behind me, Satan, not today. Today I'm going to do the hard work of the gospel. Today I'm going to love all fight for all, care for all, because that's the way of the cross. That's the way of my preparation this Lent. And that's where I want to be come the Easter feast in April. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in worship this morning. Stand if you'd like and say the Nicene Creed together, found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. with all our heart and all our minds. Let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our bishop, for all the clergy and people, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of Londonderry, for our surrounding communities and every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the good earth which God has given us, for the wisdom and will to conserve it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Particularly this week, we remember those on our parish prayer list. Catherine, Linda, Pam, Reverend Joe, Cheryl, Steve, Carol, Pauline, Connie and Deanie, Sully, Carol, Bill, Karen, Diane, Benjamin, Jane, Penny, June, Bob, Ed, Beckett, Kim, Lori, Penny, Myra, Susan, John, Gay, Kathy, Deanie, Mary, Grace, Lorette, Oliver, Anne, Bev, Dawn, Peter, Denny, Joan, Nancy, Suzanne, Tiffany, Sharon, Jane, Michael, and Sarah. We pray for those on our parish prayer cycle. John, Faye, Paul, and Carl Morlock, Marie Mula and Barry, Gail, Jackson, and Peyton Musco. 
for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed, particularly this week we remember Jerry Toop. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Today, we also remember and pray for the over 2,480,000 people worldwide who have died from the coronavirus. Also remembering the over 501,000 deaths in the United States alone for their families and loved ones. We pray for an end to the pandemic and for the vaccines to be safely and quickly administered. Facing the coronavirus, we pray for all who mourn their dead, for the millions who have contracted the virus, and for all who are quarantined, for those who are stranded away from home, for those who have lost their employment, for those who fear the present and the future, for children who may not assemble for school, for those children attending school in person and their teachers and support staff, for parents with needs for child care, for physicians, nurses, and home health aides, for hospitals and clinics, first responders, for volunteers who are serving their communities, for medical research, for the World Health Organization, for adequate and wise governmental policies, for the hope promised and speedy distribution of the vaccines. Comfort and relieve all who have been infected or fallen ill with COVID-19 and increase the sensitivity and compassion of those whom we entrust with the responsibility on acting on our behalf. In the communion of the blessed Mother Mary, Peter, our patron saint, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Lord, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In your compassion, look upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And all here. Sure to share the peace on Zoom, in the chat. Peace, Emery and Michael. Peace to you all. Peace this Lenten season. I hope that you take the time this Lent to do whatever it is that y you do to prepare yourself for the Easter feast. And maybe take this opportunity to find a new faith habit that you continue to practice well beyond Easter. It's why I've never been s too excited about the penitential kind of self-flatulation act of giving up wine or chocolate or <laughs> swearing, whatever it is. Those are things that only last a few weeks and then we kind of move on and maybe drink more or have more chocolate or swear more than we ever did before. But this Lenten season, if you can find something in your life that you take on 
praying daily, journaling, meditating, writing letters to loved ones, whatever it may be, maybe it sticks and it's not just some fad of a practice, but a new lifestyle. I welcome you to consider that this Lent. There are a few things that we are pointing you in the direction of this Lent. If you, hopefully you receive the parish email and see that you can sign up for the daily newsletter from the Society of St. John the Evangelist um, or, and also receive the weekly video series that they have um, this Lent. Another weekly video that we uh, offer to you is the video that has been, that are the videos that are being produced by the Diocese of New Hampshire, the um, eight to 10 minute reflections um, on a scripture and a reading meditation. You can listen to it, or if you're a visual person, you can see it with kind of images that help you kind of find a meditative state. You can find those on the diocesan website or youtube.com slash NH Episcopal, or of course, in your email. And then finally, yesterday, for the first time this Lent, and every Saturday moving forward in Lent, we offer uh, Stations of the Cross on Saturday mornings. That's not something that has to be led by a clergy person. That's something that anyone can do. We've already had a few folks volunteer, but if you'd like to lead the Stations of the Cross um, on one of these Saturdays in Lent, please let me know, uh, and I'd love to help uh, set you up um, with how to do that on a Saturday. Whether it's those things or your own thing, I hope you take this opportunity to make uh, Lent holy and sacred for you. One final announcement. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, which means hopefully we will be outside again, weather permitting. So keep an eye on the forecast, keep an eye on your email. We'll try to stay in touch with you as the week goes on. But as long as it's warm enough and a day like today, hopefully not maybe as icy on the ground, uh, we'll gather again outside for worship. Um, and tell your friends, if there's someone you're close to in this community that finds Zoom church is not for them, uh, maybe this is a good opportunity for you to say, hey, come to the, the drive-in service. It's actually really neat. It's, I know it sounds goofy, but trust me, you're going to love it. <laughs> Glad you're with us in some capacity this morning. Ascribe to the Lord all honor and glory, do his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Good morning. I would like to dedicate this anthem, I Will Arise and Go to Jesus, to the memory of Mary, mother of Joy O'Connor, who passed away this week, and also to honor Aaron on this, her birthday today. <laughs> Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, sick and sore. Jesus, Son of God, will save you, full of pity, love and power. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms. In the arms of my dear Savior, oh, there are ten thousand charms. Come ye thirsty, come and welcome God's free bounty glorify. True belief and true repentance, every grace that brings you now. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. Come ye weary, heavy laden, lost and ruined by the fall. If you tarry till you're better, you will never come at all. 
I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. This plate represents for us those gifts that have been given over to the church this week, those checks that have physically come in the mail and those digital transfers that magically find their way from your bank into the church's bank. This plate represents the gifts that you share with this community, your time and your talents to continue the mission of this church even in this strange time. In this play also represents those gifts that we have received from God, those unexpected blessings, those daily moments of grace that sometimes we take for granted. We place them all in this plate this morning. We lift them up as a reminder that all things come from thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Our Eucharist continues this morning with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 in your Book of Common Prayer. Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin, by his grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in your word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. 
we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with our patron, St. Peter, the blessed Mother Mary, Jerry, and Mary, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Almighty, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for we, the people of God. May we take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Number nine in your St. Peter hymnal. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
praying now for those who cannot be here in person today. Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our soul. Since we cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never feel separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and life to come. Amen. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn this morning is number 142. We will sing verses 1, 4, and 5. 142. days for us did fast and pray teach us with thee to mourn our sins and close by thee to stay and through these days of penitence and through thy passion tide Yea, evermore in life and death, Jesus with us abide. Abide with us, that so this life of suffering overpassed, an Easter of unending joy we may attain at last. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. messed you up I'm sorry yeah but yeah don't worry my sorry my fault <laughs> 